Hey, welcome back to another episode of Jay Speed Shop. Um, today we're going to do something a little different. Um, I'm actually inside our camper and we're going to go over, I'm going to cover a couple upgrades we did to this that I didn't film. Um, and then uh, we're going to actually install new speakers in the ceiling. So the uh, factory speakers here, uh, one of them rattles all the time, like it's kind of blown. Um, not uh, definitely not the uh, best sounding by any means. Pretty cheap, lightweight speakers, like everything else on trailer, cheap and lightweight. Um, pretty good trailer overall. Pretty happy with it. Um, so, I'll kind of give show you guys a round of that real quick. So, this is a 2019 Grand Design MK2670, I think is the model number. And uh, so it's kind of a, what you call a couple's coach. The uh, really, really set up for two people. The, uh, but we're, you know, been pretty happy with it so far. Not many issues. Grand Design seems to be fairly solid as far as trailers goes. I mean, none of them are great. Um, you got to know that going in that uh, there's going to be little things you got to fix. But so far, uh, we had a couple things when we first got that were covered under warranty. And then since then, really no major issues. Knock on some fake wood here. Um, so we've done a couple of upgrades, but basically this, this coach, you know, has a lot of living space. This, the slide is not out on the right hand side here. So that's why the table is literally up against the, the, uh, what call Island. Um, but normally that slides out about know, a good three feet or so. And so it makes it pretty spacious. So it's got, it does have a table that folds into a bed. So if you do have somebody stand over, or, uh, you know, a couple little kids, probably one adult or a couple little kids can sleep on it, but it's uh, okay. And then in the back, I've just got the island. And it's got what, it's kind of like a desk area, really. It goes across the back two thirds of the trailer that has, uh, we have a stool under there and you, know, you can use it as a workspace or, you know, we usually end up putting our ice maker and bar set up there. Um, and then it's just got a two recliner uh, little love seat here that uh, you could also optional was to have a fold out a bed that folds out of that too. That's a, a different option versus having the recliners. Um, but pretty nice trailer overall. Um, it's pretty normal trailer bathroom. Nothing real exciting. And then uh, normal uh, Old bedroom. It's got quite a bit of storage space because it's got a closet on either side of the bed, and then it's got a closet here with a couple drawers below it. So pretty good storage space, plus a lot of storage up above. So really, we've gone for a week and have no problem with plenty of extra space. So a couple of the upgrades that we've done to this unit. Um, for one thing, these come in handy. These are little plastic covers that cover your air conditioning vents, so you can kind of control the airflow a bit, a little bit more. Um, we found that it, he, there's only one vent in the bed or in the, yeah, in the bedroom and there's like four, three out here, plus the, plus the main unit, which you can open up the vents on the side, but in order to get more air into the bath, into the bedroom, we usually actually have a cover on the one here and a cover on the one in the bathroom. Um, and then that kind of helps the air conditioning force more air flow into the bedroom and, uh, seems to work pretty good. So a couple of the upgrades we did, other upgrades we did this year, this is our third summer with, the, with this trailer. And it's the first year we've done really any upgrades to it. First one was putting in these dimmer switches. So now you can control the, the brightness of the lights. Um, inside didn't really need it. It wasn't a big deal. The outside awning light is extremely bright led lights and just overkill, um, when you, when you used to turn them on. So, Put the uh, dimmer switch there, and then the third dimmer switch uh, actually goes up in the storage area in the front. But it's a uh, the dimmer switch for the uh, the Grand Designs have this kind of V-shaped design in the front with LED lights. Um, it looks kind of cool, but again, if you turn on in a campground at night, it's just way too bright. So uh, we put a dimmer on that, and then you can kind of turn it so it looks cool, but it's not like you know blinding your neighbors. So we just kind of we'll turn that on occasionally in the evening. Um, so the other uh, upgrades we did this spring, which have come in really handy, we'll go outside here real quick. So one was the RV lock. So these are uh, a couple hundred bucks, 250 bucks maybe. Um, and very easy install. Basically, there are four screws back here. 
and that comes off. And that allows you to uh, then just punch a four digit code, or you can make it, I think four to eight, actually, you can go up as high as eight um, digit code to get in. And um, also has a remote, but it's nice because it, like if you want to go for a walk, you don't want to carry your keys with you or go for a hike in the morning or whatever. It's nice to be able to leave stuff behind and not worry about it. Um, the other thing is uh, it allows me to lock it from the outside. What, ha what has happened is I've gone for a walk with the old lock. I locked it from the outside, but that allowed my wife to come out in the morning while I was gone and locked herself out because it allowed you to open, even though I locked from the outside, this was locked, but it allowed you to open from the inside. And so then when she shut the door, she was locked out. So with this, that can't happen because you can just punch the code and get back in. And plus it locks the deadbolt versus the smaller lock. Um, and then the other upgrade we did was also lock related this year was to put these tumbler locks on, which are uh, great. The, the factory locks, are extremely cheap the keys are hard to get in hard to get out um very difficult to use i mean once you had the key in they were fine but if we went to these ones with i don't know what they even call these but they got the little stubby circular key and they really were easy to install and they really work really really well basically i can walk you through the install is on these real quick you just have to take off this piece on your old lock, which this this one's got a nut. The other one, I think, had a Phillips screw, kind of more like these factory ones here. Um, take that off, and then there's just this locking nut here that you take off. And the key is these locks come in several different sizes, like lengths of the shaft. So the best way is to take your old one out, because it's kind of hard to measure when it's in the door. You're kind of, because you got this trim piece that's a little bit thicker on the end. So the best thing is to take the old lock out, measure it before the new one. We got these off of Amazon. They come in like a five pack. And we have two storage doors, and then we have a door over the outdoor kitchen. So we put them on all three of those. I would say pretty easy. The only, and it comes with, the new lock comes with a straight version of, of this uh, locking, I think it's called locking pin. Um, and it comes with one that, this one that's curved. Neither one worked perfectly for our application. I had, what I had ended up having to do was I kind of stuck this one in the, I don't know if you can see it here. It's really hard to tell, but I kind of stuck it in the vise and flattened it a little bit. So it's not quite as uh, sharp as it used to be as far as the how, I guess the depth of the curve. And that made it work fine. So it did, did take a little, little tweaking with it. And then maybe I may have ordered maybe not quite the right lock cylinder length. Like you see, there's quite a bit of extra thread on this one. Here you can see the extra thread that uh, back here. So I didn't, uh, maybe I ordered a lock cylinder was a little bit too long. So I had to use a slightly uh, different uh, mechanism or adjust this a little bit. But again, the best way is, and I did not take mine off to measure. I was in storage and I was in a hurry. And so I just kind of eyeballed it. And uh, so I might've been, maybe I should have had one inch locks versus one and a quarters or something like that. I think these are one and a quarters that I used. And uh, I say it was, it was no big deal. I mean, literally the install took like 10 minutes to do all three of them. So pretty easy. So those are pretty much the upgrades we've done. So say we're going to uh, do the upgrade of the stereo system, not the stereo system itself, but the uh, speakers. So we got some kicker. I actually just ordered three sets of kickers because we got two for the Jeep too. Um, haven't installed those yet, but actually the, this exact same speaker is going in the roll bar of the Jeep and then went with a six and three quarter for the dash. So this has two indoor speakers and two outdoor speakers. The outdoor ones really work fine. It's just the one indoor one kind of vibrates. And basically these, these are pretty easy to take out. This comes off, it's got three screws. I think the new one's gonna have four screws. So I might have to go buy an extra screw, but uh, pretty simple to, uh, to install the key is, and we'll show you, uh, is the make sure is you to take your old one out and measure first because these speakers come in a lot of different uh depths. And uh, even though it says it's a six and a half, they're not all exactly the same. So if you read down in the details, like I ordered these off of Crutch Fields, they've got a good selection. Um, obviously, they've got a lot of detail about what fits your car, not so much about campers. 
but they do give you all the specs. And one of the things, you know, is I did not want to have to modify the hole in the ceiling. I mean, you could, it's, it's just plywood, but I just didn't want to take a chance of nicking up any of this uh, interior, I guess you call it wallpaper, whatever it is they use on the interior. But so I measured the hole underneath this and I made sure I ordered a speaker set that said what size hole it fits because on that, all the six and a halfs were the same. Some required a five and a quarter hole. Some required a four and three quarters hole. And the hole on this one, if I recall, was just right around five even inches. So I want to make sure, no, I haven't tried it yet, so we'll see if it worked or not. But based on my measurements and uh, what the Crutchfield uh, product details said, this should hopefully work. Um, so we'll see. I probably might have to play around with, you know, getting the right wire connectors on and stuff like that, but it should be a fairly easy install. One other item is, is also not only the width of the hole, but the depth of the speaker too. The speakers come in quite a few range anywhere from an inch and a half deep. Um, if you're face mounting like this to, I think somewhere over three inches deep. So, you know, depending on the size of the magnet and, and, uh, shape of the cone and everything, um, you need to measure how much room you got. This trailer's got kind of a barrel roof and it has quite a bit of space. Like I figured I had about three and a half inches. And so I think I got speakers. These speakers are only probably an inch and a half. I think the new ones I got are about two and a half, um, but they should fit fine based on the measurements. But if you have, depending on your trailer, so you need to measure how much room, take your old speaker out and measure how much room you've got behind. Um, because depending on the roof design or where the speaker is located, there may not be uh, room underneath it. Hopefully I don't run into an issue. I did not take both of them. I only took one out. So hopefully the other one has the same amount of space behind it as this one did. Okay, we got one installed and I'll, then I'll walk you through the steps on the second one. Um, but pretty simple. The uh, only dust is we ended up with black speakers, which is everything else in the ceiling is white. Um, the only white speakers I could find were boat speakers. And most of them were $300 or they were, um, some of them were really, really deep. Um, and I was, I was gonna like, they're like three and a half inches deep too, which is just too deep to go into these, these ceilings. This, this one I think was about two inches deep. I can look again, well, I can show you. Um, but these, these ones were deeper than the factory ones, but, uh, but not real deep. But anyways, so they're black, it's fine. Um, but they should sound way better than those factory ones. So let me walk you through. Well, here you can see the size difference between the, uh, there's the, what this came with, uh, pummel drive. Uh, these actually say they're marine speakers made in China. Well, I guess they're all made in China. The new ones, kickers are made in China too, but, um, you see definitely way, way bigger magnet and stuff on the new ones. Um, this is a paper cone. New ones, uh, the polypropylene cone. Um, I'm not sure that these are really going to be very durable for marine application unless they're just for inside. Um, but anyways, so I'll walk you through the tools you need really pretty basic. A set of wire cutters, Phillips screwdriver, um, wire strippers to do it the way I did it. Um, I mean, you could get away if you used, you could you could get away with just the cutters and probably uh, needing those pliers to, to squeeze the terminals or whatever. Um, and then either a drill or a impact driver like this that uh, makes it a lot easier to get those screws, in, especially if you're trying to do this one-handed like I am, um, or two-handed but by myself. One of the things I want to show you, and the negative terminal on these new speakers is a smaller spade than the positive terminal, and you'll see that's that's common. And I think it just made so people don't swap the wires. And the kit comes with the new wire, um, the one's got the small end, one's got the bigger end, and nothing on this end, this end, and then it comes with some crimp connectors. So you could cut your uh, old connectors off, because in the case of the, the old speaker, just to show you as a comparison, the old speaker has two, both terminals are the same size. Um, the, uh, Let's see if this one's even marked positive or negative or not. I can't really tell. Looks like there might be a negative and positive up there. When I got the camera on it. I guess there is, yeah. So the, the negative is the left side, just like on the new ones. But it's got the same size uh, same size terminal. So the um, if you tried to use the wiring that was in the ceiling, you would have a very loose connection. You're only, you, you, could, you could make it work. You could wedge it on there, 
but eventually it's probably going to work its way loose because it's only going to be gripping that um, wide wire is only going to, you know, if you're trying to put that wide wire on really small terminals, you're going to only be able to grip one side of it. Um, so it doesn't work well. So you can either do what they supplied um, and crimp these connectors onto this end and connect to the existing wires, cut the old terminals off um, and crimp them on. What I did is I just grabbed some different terminals and just to avoid having one more crimp connection. The more connections you got, the more likely something is to come loose. So what I did is I got these extra connectors, one narrow, one wide, and uh, I just bought a little $7 kit off of uh, Amazon. Uh, and what I'll do then is just cut the old connectors off, put these new ones on, and then uh, and then they'll fit right onto the new speaker. So I'll set up the camera and we'll watch how we do this. Players, right, so I'm going to apologize now for the angle of this video, but uh, I can't get the camera mount up any higher. So... Basically, the steps are first, you gotta remove the old screws. In this case, they're just Phillips or uh, all the stuff in this trailer, these little square, I think the, the square head ones will work too. Guys, I'm sweating because it's 85 degrees in the trailer. I don't have the power hookup at home to be able to run the AC in here. And it's like 86 and humid out today. It's starting to rain. So basically, you're just going to disconnect. You're going to pull your old terminals off. And somebody really crushed these ones after they put them on. They didn't want they weren't going anywhere. Um, another thing you want to pay attention to, which I didn't, but um, I'll tell you a little trick before I take those off. Leave it hanging for a second is to mark which one's your negative. These ones are a little bit this this side. The other ones are hard to tell. Like usually your wires are gonna have a stripe. Um see this is a white wire with a black stripe so the black stripe is on the positive. The wires in the back were both it was black and boy you really couldn't or dark gray and you really couldn't tell especially in the lighting in here um which was which so Again, my negative is my left, so I'm just going to put a piece of tape on my negative so I know which one it is, because that's the one that's going to get the smaller terminal, um, just to mark it. I kind of split the wires up a little bit further, so I got a little bit room to work. But basically, you're just going to pull these terminals off. That one came off there. I mean, somebody really crushed these ones on there. I didn't want to make sure it wasn't going to have a bad connection. But I'm going to tear the speaker apart, trying to not that care, because I'm going to throw these away anyway. But... Really no, we'll do this these way because I'm not keeping these speakers and I'm not keeping the terminal. So we're just going to cut that off versus playing with it. So cut that one off. Cut that one off. So in this case, the black stripe's the positive, and I got my piece of tape on the negative. I'm not sure what the, to be honest, I'm not, not a person that does a lot of wiring. I'm not sure. I think the white, the stripe is supposed to be the positive all the time, but I feel like I've seen things done both ways. As long as you're consistent on how you wire so that your connections at your uh, receiver are this, done the same way and your speakers are done consistently, it doesn't matter really if you use the uh, stripe or uh, non-stripe for your positive, as long as you're just consistent throughout the whole, whole process. So, next thing we're going to do is strip these wires. This is... Uh, 16 gauge, and I don't need very much off these connectors. Do not require us to have very, very much off of them at all. Yep. 16 or 18, actually. So I just need just a little bit. Depends on how you're, what you're doing. Sometimes you want a little bit more wire than that. But on these connectors, it doesn't take having very much out at all. Hopefully the camera's catching all this. Just kind of cutting that insulation off and then pulling it off. That's all it really takes. And then these particular uh, wires are uh, they have this little piece here. It's uh, this, the uh, little insulation piece that goes over the terminal. So 
slide that up there before you put the terminal on. And then the terminal, let's see if I can get working, you guys can see this. These terminals have little, so you can see that little U-shape, that's going to get crushed. This back U is going to get crushed over the top of the insulation, and the smaller one on the front is going to be clamped down on the wire. So again, I'm just going to station this so that the insulation's on the wire. And then, oops, you know, I got my other crimpers I'm going to use, which are probably way out of my reach, as Chris they are. Okay, now let's crimpers. This has a lot more choices and sizes. You don't necessarily have to have these to do this. I wouldn't go buy them if you're just doing one job. So again, we're going to get that. So my insulation's under the one, and I'm using the uh, number three. Let's try and spin this around a little bit like that. I'm using the number three size. Putting it up in there. And that just crushes it down on the wire. And then I use the same size. Go up here. Crush it down the insulation. So now we have a nice tight fit on that. So it's crimped over the wire and it's crimped over the insulation to hold it together. Then you slip your little insulation over. Do the bigger terminal for the positive now. So I do this so that I can turn this the right way. Good. Wire crimp good. I'm gonna come back and crimp the back part with the uh, insulation. Now I got a good connector on both of them. So I'll slide the little insulation cover down. And then the next thing we're gonna do is just be ready to put the speaker up. Don't forget to put your grill on if your grill had these in case the grill the screws go through the grill. So you want to get them up there and find out you gotta take it back down and then make sure your grill's sitting down. Yeah, this one here, like and then when I got up there with the other one, I was off a little bit, so they weren't lining up. So you just gotta make sure your, your grill clamps down, it's kind of good over the holes you want to go through. Um, I think mean, I mean, I'm being a little anal, but I wanted the, the kickers to be kind of lined up straight. So, um, and then basically, you gotta connect your wires and then try to get a screw started. You know, bend these connectors just a little bit so they're a little bit more straight. A little easier to get the wires on. Put our small wire on here first. It's a little bit easier. That insulation wants to slide, so I'm going to slide that insulation back out of the way while I get that on there. Now we're going to get our positive on. Try to turn it so it's going in the other direction. You just slip on. They're a little tight, but slip on until they snap. The negative does not go on quite as easily with the. Trying to get these negatives to lock down is a little bit tougher. Let's 
freestyle for a second. I'm gonna make sure it kind of snaps so it, it's gonna stay in place. We'll take this tape off now if I can get it one handed. So I just wanna make sure we got our grill back in place where it's supposed to be. Right there. Push your wires up. And this just becomes kind of the fun part, just trying to hold this up there. Yourself. That's where a second set of hands would come in a little handy. Once you get the second one, it's in pretty good shape. So we'll go across here. So once you get the first two in, pretty good shape. Uh, the thing I guess make sure is whatever screws come with your uh, your radio aren't any longer than the ones that were with, not through with your speakers aren't any longer than what was there. You don't want to go through your roof with them. These are the exact same length as the ones I took out. These are just four instead of, instead of three. They're a little bit narrower, but that being four, they should be plenty good enough. I think that's it. That's a speaker install, so I just gotta do that twice, but 